Hey guys, welcome back to another Hat Tracy video. Today we have a very special interview with the one and only Yael Averbush. A former US WNT player and UNC Chapel Hill alumnus, Yael Averbush has led a very successful soccer career with her discipline and incredible work ethic. She has played for clubs across the country and around the world. She currently runs her business, Techni Football, an app that leads you through great drills, weekly sessions, and more. For more information, go to the description. Fun fact, Yale holds the record for the fastest goal scored in NCAA history, with a goal scored in four seconds. Her jersey was also retired at UNC Chapel Hill. We were fortunate enough to meet Yale at the ECNL New Jersey Showcase, and we met up to talk about her soccer journey, technique football, and the mental side of the game. Let's get to it. All right, so this starts our interview with Yale Averbush. So uh, thank you again for uh, sitting down with us and talking to us. I wanted to start our first part of the interview by like discussing the more like mental aspects of the game, um, because obviously a lot of young players have trouble balancing that with like obviously like the mental part of the game with the physical part of the game and like obviously technical and tactical. So, um, so. We are heading to uh, San Diego, uh, actually in a few days, to play in the ECNL National Playoffs. Yeah. And um, I was just wondering how you prepare uh, for like a big stage mentally and like how you've learned to handle pressure. Yeah, so this is a challenge for not just young players. Um, mm -hmm. I think everyone at all levels. And that, that I think is really important to understand is that you never just have it down and it's okay. It's like, it's always a challenge to stay confident, to be prepared mentally. And I think it looks different for every type of player. Like I know for myself, I was never somebody who needed motivation. Like I was always almost too motivated. So I'd get really nervous because I put a lot of pressure on myself. So I was never somebody who was like, I, I was almost affected by my internal pressure more than any external pressure of the situation. So my personal strategy for this, and again, like I said, I think everyone's different, but my personal strategy was always just to approach everything and try to stay as even keeled as possible. So I knew in my preparation and my training, I would like take those things almost more seriously than most players because any time I'm training, I'd be imagining it was the biggest stage, the biggest environment, the World Cup, whatever it was, even if I was training on my own, I would like put that kind of fake mental pressure on myself to prepare. And then that way, when I arrived at like an actual important event, a playoff game, something where there were scouts or coaches watching, or even, you know, with the national team, eventually, I tried to then downplay it and be like, well, this is just the same as everything you do every day to train and prepare. Mm -hmm. So that way you kind of get that even approach where you don't, there's nothing different you're doing on that day that you've never done before or felt before. It's very hard to do. And I, I'm not an expert. I still deal with this myself all the time. But I think for me, that was my approach is to try to just stay as even mentally as possible. Have you had trouble like finding like your identity as a player or like what kind of obstacles have you like faced mentally with that uh, kind of aspect? Yeah, that, that's a great question. Um, I think for me, I always felt that I've had a pretty clear identity as a player. Like I knew I've known my strengths and weaknesses pretty clearly. And that kind of came from I played a lot with boys growing up and it, in environments where it was really clear to me, like, OK, you're not going to compete physically against them. Here's what you can do well and offer the game. Um, so I think I was very clear on that. My actual struggle, and this is mental and physical and, and really everything, was kind of to fit that skill set and that identity into various environments. And um, so for me, the mental challenge was like, like working on my weaknesses, but not letting that affect my confidence too much, like understanding that I could still feel really good about myself and confident and awesome and address weakness rather than being so focused on my weakness that I felt bad about myself and that I wasn't good enough but kind of finding that proper balance of being hungry to get better, but not down on yourself. And so that's, I mean, when I say this is something I faced in the past tense, this is always, you know, this is always my personal battle. Still to this day, when I think of playing, I'm like, okay, well, how can I feel really good and confident and offer the best of what I do well to my team? And then also be aware of either covering up or working on certain areas where I know other players can kind of expose me into it. I've conducted a lot of interviews with like a, a, like with my teammates as well, and I feel like um, I wanted to address confidence just because like it's something that a lot of young players like face. Um, yeah, and like especially like trying not to get down on yourself like too much. I feel like that's always hard because you have a lot of people telling you like, "Hey, you got to work on this," and like you're not good enough and stuff like that. So, um, like, what kind of um, like, what kind of ways do you, like, would you address confidence to, like, young players? Yeah, I think confidence can come from a lot of places. Like, some people, no matter what you tell them, are just going to be confident no matter what. I think especially a lot of young players and a lot of 
um, girls in particular uh, struggle with confidence and really latch on to the more negative feedback so much more than the positive. So I think it's about being honest with yourself. And like what I would recommend to a young player um, or any player is that try to like view yourself like you would view a teammate. So if a teammate made a mistake in a game, you wouldn't like continue to harp on them. You might be like, oh, that wasn't great, but like, come on, get back in it next time. Um, you'd be for more forgiving than we often are on ourselves. So I know some of the best advice I ever got was like, make sure your self-talk is like you would talk to a friend or a teammate. Like you would never be down on someone else or constantly pointing out their weaknesses. You'd say, hey, you had an awesome game. Here's something you could have improved. You wouldn't be like talking to them like maybe you talk to yourself like oh like it didn't matter you did a couple things well because you made all these mistakes so I think um just having a fair view of yourself and like honestly looking at your strengths and weaknesses as a player like you would evaluate someone else is really important and much easier said than done so I'm not an expert at it but that would be my advice <laughs> and I saw that you like um started playing like at a high level like with the national teams as like a young player um how is playing at that like um high level like impacted you like today yeah, I think when I look back, I was always so serious about what I did, even from a really young age, like nine, 10, 11 years old, I was like getting really serious. So um, from kind of the first ages that I could, you know, try out for the state team and then be part of some national identification things like national training pools and camps, the system is a little bit different now than it, how it worked in my day, kind of. It was very heavily weighted on ODP when I was coming up through the system. But like you pointed out, I was involved in some of these youth national team and national pool experiences. And um, for me, this was like the ultimate because I would, that was my goal and my dream. Um, but I think it was now that I look back, it was a lot of pressure, the external pressure. And then like we talked about the internal extra pressure I put on myself right. to not just do my best and learn, but to like try to be the best one there and always comparing myself to other people. And I think if I were to look back I wish I had compared myself less to other people and focused more on learning from the environments. Um, because really at the age when you're 14, 15, 16, even all the way up through college, um, it doesn't matter where you rank. It matters that you continue going forward and that you're improving. That matters so much more. And it's easy now to say, looking back, oh, it didn't matter at 14 if I wasn't the best one in camp, if I was fifth best or whatever. But at the time, it seemed like everything. Like if I wasn't the best in my position, like I wasn't going to make it and all these things. And I think... Um, if I could tell myself back then, like a message, it would be, you know what, like this doesn't matter in the long term of how you rank. Don't compare yourself to others. Just try to learn and grow as a player and focus on that because that in the end is what will reward you more than anything. Great. Yeah. Um, like, especially like with your work with like technique football, like um, how does like self-development, like how much does that mean to you? Like self-development? Yeah, I mean, I think for me, that's been everything. And that's been a huge area. You know, we're talking about the mental side of the game. That's been a huge area where I get my confidence because I know that I'm going to be attending to everything I can in between my practice sessions away from my team so that when I show up again, I have put in the work and I feel really prepared. And additionally for me, you know, it's the kind of thing, I think if, if you as a player have your own relationship with the game and your own relationship with your development and you're taking control over that rather than, just saying, oh, coach, tell me what I need to do, or my parents will make me practice, or whatever it is that some players have going on. I think if it's yours and you own it, then it gives you a lot of power because a coach can say, like, oh, you didn't have a good game today, or you're cut from the team, or whatever. But you can then go home and say, okay, well, what do I want to do with this? You know, they don't control my path as a player. I can go, I can get better at something. I can go from a non starter to a starter. I can go from a starter to making the next level that I want to make. And that, at the end of the day, whether you kind of let an obstacle get in your way and decide to give up or continue on and continue to get better no matter what happens, that really is up to you and like your internal decision. So I think the more that young players can develop that, that individual relationship and ownership over what they do, whether it's like the technical training, which is what Techni is focused on, or the mental aspect of preparing mentally, recovery, all those things, if you have ownership over it, it gives you a lot of confidence and power as a player to show up and say, you know what? I'm prepared. I know who I am. No matter what happens here, good or bad, I'm going to keep moving forward. Yeah, that's really important. Like, I think a lot of people overlook that certain, like, relationship, their individual relationship with the game. Um, yeah, like, because I can see where um, people rely so much on, like, practices and their coaches and their parents and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, I feel like having that individual relationship is, like, watching the World Cup and that kind of stuff. Like, yeah, just little things. Like, I feel, yeah. So, like, what direction do you think, like, 
um, with the World Cup happening, like what direction do you see the women's sport going? Yeah, I just want to point something out. That's a really good question. I kind of want to point something out about what you guys just said, because I think that's such a good point. Like watching the game is a big yeah. part of this. And I think whether it's watching the game or whatever individual relationship you create, because there is so much good support out there from coaches and parents. It's like, yeah, they're all willing to do it for yeah. you. But yeah. as a player, I think um, it's good to, to try to create a team culture. And I know it's, it's a hard thing to do, but where like those things are celebrated. And it's not cool to say you don't watch the game or you don't practice on your own because like that's not a fun thing to brag about, really. Like, if that's a reality for some people, that's fine. But, like, you guys should be really proud that you're watching the game and that you're taking initiative to do things. And I think the more you can celebrate that thing, and if someone else says they do something like that, like, engage with them on it and celebrate those things. And then then it'll it'll kind of build within your team. And I've noticed that in teams I'm on, too. The same thing, even at the top level. Certain players, like, don't necessarily like watching the game. Or they say, like, oh, I didn't do X, Y, and Z. I was supposed to. And it's like... You could laugh and make that funny, but like it's not really funny, you know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> exactly. But yeah, the, you guys are asking awesome questions. The women's game <laughs> as a whole, I think um, this World Cup to me has really shown what I kind of felt all along was going on. I think that um, it's growing so much, and not just, you know, it starts with things like the investment and the marketing and the visibility, but really the most impressive thing to me is the quality on the field. Mm -hmm. Like this is an exciting World Cup tournament. All the teams I've really enjoyed watching for different reasons. And in the past, I think in the women's game, you couldn't really say that. Like there'd be a few top teams that were fun to watch and then a really big drop off. And this World Cup, I mean, honestly, there have been 24 fun teams to watch. Yeah. And even more getting into that group of like could maybe win the whole thing. So that says a lot for where the women's game is going. Thank you to Yael Avery Bush again for that amazing interview. Go check out her brilliant work at her YouTube channel and at Techni Football. For more interviews and blog posts, go to www.hattricksy.com. Link in the description. And don't forget to like and subscribe and come back soon for some more Hattricksy.